Okay, one final thing I'm going to show here um, is one of the reasons that people wanted access to these material components uh, on their own. Um, so, and I'll show you here. So, I'll delete all of that and plug in a Lambert and a GGX BRDF. I'll just make that. Actually, I'll leave that as white. Now, this is, oh, and actually one more thing, I'll add a emission because that makes it simpler. So I'll plug that in. There is an additional tool, and this is called a material integrator, illumination. So I'll just plug that into that, plug that into there, and then I'll explain what's happening here. So what we are doing is driving the color surface, or in this case, the luminosity, by the Lambert color. Now, you've got direct and indirect, or just the full thing. I'll just use standard direct. Oops, that's the BTDF. That's why it's looking a bit odd. I will get the Lambert BRDF. Keep doing that. Right, there you go. So you have a simple direct illumination. Of course, it's got a skylight, so there's backfill. All of the light, or just the indirect. You could, of course, use these to add together, but one of the main reasons, of course, most people like to use these types of things is if they want to put a gradient in it. So let's add a simple gradient. Put that in the input, that in the color. Of course, standard gradient's black. I will add a, let's see, a nice purple pink color. And I can tweak that. I will add an additional, actually, you know what I'll do is from I'll add another, make that a step, and that a step as well. What we've effectively built here, of course, if anybody that knows what this is for, is a tune shader. You may wish to do it this way. We have tune tools built into Lightwave, but we now have this material integrator where we can just use the the raw inputs. Of course, it's going to give a slightly fuzzy edge because we have radiosity. So I'll plug just the direct input. Yes, now we won't get a foot, you know, as, as fuzzy an edge. You can, of course, plug textures, expose the gradient, all of that type of thing. I can do exactly the same thing. Oops, wrong way around. Plug that. Into the material. Instead, and we have a specular driving an input. We can of course add, multiply. We could let that I'll do this I'll do that exact thing. I will add another one of these. Another gradient. Put the direct into input. Change that to be, let's see, a blue. Use a vector add. So math. Add the two together, and we've effectively added a nice purple hotspot to a hideous diffuse. But you get the idea. These are very, very powerful.
increase the roughness, increase the roughness. I can of course make that not a stepped gradient. I'll start getting a nice blend. Which is rather weird looking, but quite cool. Do the same thing for that. Of course, we're getting this a rather unusual blend because we're not using a key light, we're using an environment light. So we're getting a rather weird and unusual effect. But you get the idea. If I was to hide the scene light, let's see, I'll get that. Hide the environment, add a sun, we'd get a more typical hotspot, which is what you would expect. Environment lights, obviously, but it works perfectly. Um, the only thing I will note for any of you wanting to explore is only specular and diffuse seems to work with it so far. Um, I've tried the a lot of the other materials, uh, for example, subsurface scattering doesn't do anything at all. Unfortunately, it seems to be mostly limited to BRDFs, but that is very powerful in and of itself. And most people like to use, I mean, a standard use for that, of course, is a day night shader for lighting a planet. And you can use that mask as a white black mask for lighting, you know, the put texture on that side, texture on that side, that general sort of thing. Okay, hopefully you will find use for these new tools. Anybody that has any questions on how to do anything in particular, just get in touch and uh, thank you and hopefully you enjoy them.